G'day, I'm Ben Holcomb from School of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering and I'm down here in the Vibration Lab at UTS Tech Lab. And this video is a continuation to the previous video we did with respect to the use of the PSV 500 Extra scanning laser vibrometer, which we primarily looked at the hardware, what's in the box and how to set it up, how to mount the sensor head on the tripod and get started with the software. I'm, I'm actually here currently with a, a group of junior researchers and capstone project students. So we're uh, recording this video on the fly while, while I show how to set, set up the software side of the scanning vibrometer. We've powered up the PC first. Um, I showed that in the last video. Then we've powered up the vibrometer controller. Um, the scanning head is sitting over here on a tripod and we've got geometry scanning laser, currently the red laser, which is coming towards the the test piece which is this blade which is mounted over here on, uh, on a rigid cantilever, in the cantilever beam type fixed free scenario. We're going to go with an impact hammer for excitation um, which is BNK 8206 impact hammer is an IEP transducer we've got a silicon tip we're going to do an experiment with a range of different tips in this case and um, we're going to sample very quickly we're going to make, measure the time the time series, actually, with, with respect to the excitation and the corresponding response measurements with the laser vibrometer for a series of points across the blade. I'm going to try to do a, a short five minute talk and then we'll, we'll stop. So we've looked at this before, but the PSV acquisition shortcut is the one that we're interested in on the desktop. And we launched that. Um, the, the system's going to firstly ask us, do we want to go with H or V mode? Um, H is high frequency, V is very high frequency and we would normally go with high frequency that gives us a frequency range of up to uh, 100 kilohertz very high frequency gives us a frequency range of up to 2.5 megahertz these are very very high frequencies we're typically with structures certainly like this we're interested in free natural frequencies or resonances on the order of 100, several hundred hertz perhaps up to a few kilohertz Typically for this type of scale structure, you know, these super high frequencies, 100, 100 kilohertz and higher, you know, they're ultrasonic frequencies, they're for very small samples, potentially microelectromechanical systems and things of that nature. Important to note that when we go with H, we'll be using this junction box, the one with four references, sorry, I beg your pardon, eight references, four generators, so four different signals, um, and some auxiliary inputs and outputs, triggering and sync. Um, inputs, BNC inputs. If we go with a V mode we only have three references, uh, one generator and trigger in and sync. Okay so those are used those are used for scenarios where we would maybe be using a high speed video camera as well as the vibrometer and monitor to start both acquisition systems simultaneously so we can pass triggers or sync signals backwards and forwards which are just TTL 5 volt signals that say start acquisition and we can use those to start two simultaneous instruments. We might have a separate trigger start button, in fact, or yeah, any, any kind of scenario along those lines. High-speed cameras often come with a, with a start uh, trigger separate box. How am I for time at the moment? Three minutes and 40. Thank you. I'll keep going for a bit. So we, we go with H mode, um, and it will communicate with the controller and launch a new system uh, or a new project file. It gives me an error warning. Now I think this requested decoder range 25 meters per second is not available for, the de de for this decoder. This error message actually we've... Uh, okay now I understand why we've got this error message. So what we've got here, and I didn't know this, this is good for the video actually, um, is that we've taken the PSV 500 helium neon head and this laser beam isn't the geometry beam at all, my mistake this is the helium neon laser in the standard uh, scanning head we have two scanning heads, I just showed the fact that we've got two scanning heads in the video when we set up the hardware and when we change the scanning heads between the controller, same cable and everything the software changes because the um, the the maximum um, dynamic range changes in the controller depending upon which scanning head we have connected. 
because we've got different wavelengths of light left with different vibrometers. So the software is telling us that uh, I'm changing or I'm updating because previously we, had a, we were using a different configuration. Previously we had the extra head connected, this time we've got the um, helium neon head. So you might get that error message depending upon which head was previously connected to the PSV500. We'll just hit OK and it will go away and, and, and start to work out on you know, what the ranges are. And then we have a window that looks like this as well as, so we can, we've got some other windows in here and we can cascade those, uh, sorry, we should tile those probably horizontally. And I can probably lose one or I can reorganize these how I wish. Normally I'm, I'd, I'd probably put the image, get, try and get the image a bit bigger of the sample here and organize these uh, windows. But it's entirely up to, to you, personal preference. In the next video I'll show how we start to configure this to do an acquisition.